Welcome to my studio everybody and today I'm going to be talking about cherries and gouache and how to paint um, opaquely in gouache rather like oil or acrylic and so let's go over to the table and see what we can see. So I'm using Turner gouache today uh, comes from uh, Japan originally I believe and um, it's available at Jerry's Artorama and you can order it. It's a bright, very bright and intense form of gouache. Gouache is an opaque watercolor and so some of the colors that I'm using from this box of 12 are orange, or permanent yellow deep. It's kind of a more of an orange than a yellow and I'm going to be using permanent lemon I'm working on a china plate here because gouache doesn't uh, work well in a palette. It tends to dry out a little too much. I'm using, going to use a violet, brilliant violet, nice strong uh, violet color to get this um, red that we need. And I'm going to use a little um, cobalt blue, quite a few colors here to make these cherries work. And little permanent red also. Put that one over here for the true red color of the cherry. And we usually need to use a little white gouache when we're painting with opaque colors. So certainly for the highlight, um, sometimes also to lighten up some of the colors. So I'm just going to move those to one side. A number eight brush. And I'm working on a board called Canson Mitientes art board. And that um, is basically a board with pastel paper adhered to the surface. So it comes in different colors and I like to use middle tones, either warm or cool, uh, to make these subjects stand out. So these were painted in the same way that the grapes and the cherry and the lemon were painted in exactly the same way as I'm going to paint the cherries for you now. This is just to show you how this works opaquely as opposed to transparently. Okay, so let's just take a look and go in just a little bit closer if we can. And so I'm going to start off with the idea of um, a little bit of red on the cherry initially. I'm going to start with that red around the outside. And I'm going to add in immediately a little bit of orange. I'm using these colors fairly full strength from the palette. Okay, not too much water. We're using them opaquely, so we want them to cover the surface of the board. So a little red and orange together to start with. I'm going to mix now a little bit of the purple with the red to get a slightly darker version of that red, a red purplish tone. To make it even darker still, I'm going to add a touch of blue into the mix. And so I'm going to put those darker tones around the back right away. And we'll make that cherry a nice interesting shape. Leave a little space down there next to the um, space for the stem and a little space next to the stem at the bottom because that's going to be a slightly lighter color. So I'm going to pull that dark color all the way around the edge. And so in this way I'm using it just a little bit like watercolor because I'm going to allow that those two colors to mix together. And so now I'm going to come back with the red again and go over the top here and connect those colors together while this is still just a little bit wet. Okay. And I'm trying to get the dimension. Whenever I paint, I'm always looking for the dimension of the subject before I worry about the colors. You can always add color on afterwards, but you can't always get the shape back if you haven't got the shape working well. To begin with and so I'm trying to get the dimension and I want to keep that dark down here just a little bit. And the light's coming from the left here so I will lighten up this edge just a touch with the orange before I finish that. And now I'm just going to make sure I have some soft edges in here by using a damp brush to connect everything together. That helps right away with the dimension Immediately I can see where I'm going. I need just a little bit more orange in here now and 
to connect that together and to make it read correctly and to make the color come forward just a little bit more, I'm going to use the red, the bright red. Just a little bit more of that. And again, I'm going to link the two together across the surface here so that now I have just a little bit less orange and a little bit more red showing in there. And that's helping. And now I'm still working on the dimension a little bit more, so I need to go just a touch darker with the red and the um, purple, red-violet there, and a little touch more of the blue. Okay, this is the cobalt blue. And I need to get some more shadows in here. Let's get a little bit in there. And just a touch on this side, leave a little bit of light showing back there. I need to go a bit darker still, just a wee bit darker still on that toe. There we go, now we're getting there. Darker colours tend to dry a bit lighter in gouache, and lighter colours tend to dry a little darker. So sometimes you have to do another layer because it didn't get there in quite the way that you would like. Now we're getting our true darks in here, and it's always a good idea to get all of those tones in first and worry about everything else later. Okay, now I'm going to have just a little bit of the red and the purple to darken this just a bit, but give it dark with color. I, want, I don't want any of the really strong dark in there. And I'm building this up just a little more with layers. And the pure red is going to come around the center here. And now we're getting something that's feeling a lot more like dark cherry. And I'm going to bring that red, a glaze of that red. I'll just clean my brush off here. A glaze of the pure red right over the top of the orange. And that gives me that light area where I can put my highlight. I'm going to bring a dark in here and soften it off just a little bit more. And just a touch more maybe on this side for shadow because the shadow, the light is coming across this way. So the shadow is going to be just a little bit wider on this side. Just a touch more shadow up there too and this is all still wet so it's acting with nice it's working with nice soft edges and that's working well gouache needs to be sprayed as you continue to work with it if you're working in a hot on a hot day or in a hot place then it needs to be kept wet just a little bit darker there but not too much so a little bit more of the red violet there on the top. Okay, so we're getting there. Gradually working it out to get a slightly smaller area that we can pop out with a highlight. Go just a tiny bit darker here with the red violet down here. The light is coming on this side, so this side's going to have more color, and the back side is going to have far less color. And so you can keep going back and forth to make this work. Go just a little bit darker with some blue in the mix. Right about here, I think, just as it turns. There we go. And a nice pure red towards the front. And the orange that I put underneath helps to keep that red nice and bright. Okay, if I hadn't put that in, it would be a little too dark in that area. Okay, so I'm happy with the dimension of that right now. And now I'm going to work a little bit on the stem. And the stem is going to be yellow. with a touch of blue. 
Now there is a green in this box that you can use, but it's very bright and it's just another color that we don't need to get out. So I'm going to use a little bit more yellow in here. And the stem is a sort of light yellow green. The more water you add, the more layers you'll have to do. So I'm making sure that I'm making this almost full strength because otherwise I'll have to paint it multiple times and uh, more than I would like to. So I'm going to put that little stem shape in. That seems to be a little cool to me. So I'm going to add a little orange to the mix to warm it up a bit. And now we'll have one something that's just a little, a little bit warmer. That fits better. A bit of a warmer tone overall. Okay, paint it the same all the way down to start with. And then we can add a shadow in there. We also need to add a little bit of a light tone, and I'm going to mix some orange and red for that. On the side of where this joins into the cherry. Just a little bit of a light tone in there. And we only see it on the sides because the front covers up that area. So it's just a tiny lighter tone. A bit of a shadow on the back side so we can add some blue to that same mix to make a darker tone for the shadow. And that darker tone will, co will come across here. Let's make sure I'm not making that too big. Just a little bit of a darker tone on this side. Okay. And usually between those two, I might have to go to a slightly smaller brush here to do this, number six. Between those two, there'll be a little warm tone. So I can use a little of the orange for that. Just to connect and give that stem a touch more dimension. Now, nothing looks good without a shadow. I mean, nothing looks dimensional without a shadow, a cast shadow. So let me just clean up this edge a little bit and we'll add in a cast shadow here. Cast shadow I'm going to make with the colors that I've got that uh, work with the subject. And so the subject colors are reds and blues. And so I'm going to make a purple shadow here. So I could use the, the purple color that comes already from the palette, like this, but that's a little too bright. So what I'm going to do is to mix a little blue in with that. And again, that's a little too bright for a shadow. So I'm going to mix a tiny little bit of orange in there to gray it down. Now it has a grayed violet feel. And that's probably going to be about right. It's a good idea to test on um, another page and see if that's going to be dark enough or light enough. That looks about right for this gray. Maybe just a touch more water in there. You can always do a couple of layers if we need to. That shadow comes from the side here and goes up behind the subject. And as it gets a little closer towards away from the subject, a little further away from the subject, it gets a tiny touch lighter. And so you can just lighten that up with a little bit more water. And that will make more sense realistically. And a little suggestion of that. And that might just be too dark. So I'm going to lift that back just a little bit. There we go. And lift this back just a touch so that I get more of an even tone there. And if that's drying too fast, it's drying really fast in here today because it's warm. Just spread it out a bit more so it doesn't dry quite so quickly. And I'm going to give it just a little bit more tone down here. 
and we'll see how that dries down. And while that's drying down, we can add in, there we go, that's better, just a touch more of that darker tone. And while that's drying down, so what I did was I added the darker tone in here, and then I lifted it back, and then I put in just a little bit more of the dark tone in here. And you weren't seeing that because I left it on my palette. There we go. Okay, and just a little bit more of that feeling of finish up there on that. Okay, now nothing is going to look really dimensional unless you give it a highlight. And so just as soon as I've added a little bit more tone to the stem, just a touch more of that dark tone back here, just to pop it down into, into that space. Just a little bit more dark tone across the top there. And there will be a little bit of a shadow on the other side too, just a tiny touch down here. It won't be quite, quite that light. There we go. I'm going to add just a touch more, before I put the highlight on, just a touch more orange in here, just to pop that light area out just a wee bit. So what I'm doing here is glazing. I'm putting one layer on top of another. And it's a good idea to keep spraying with a little spray bottle the surface of your paints because it will dry out much more quickly than watercolour. And now I'm just going to go back to the dark red that I used to make those shadows. And a little tiny touch of the blue to keep it more in the red feel. And just darken that edge across here just a bit. So this goes up and over that other shape. And now we can put a little bit back here too, just to, just to change that a tiny touch. little light area. It's just a bit too light back there. Put a little red on it. There we go. Okay, and now I think we're pretty good to go on that. Now we can add in the highlight. Highlight's going to be white, and it's a good idea to put it in like this, and as soon as you do, it's going to make the fruit look dimensional all by itself. And we don't necessarily need it to be quite that rounded. We can just soften it off just a little bit to give it a bit more life. So it has a little bit of a soft edge there. Just going to add a tiny touch of orange in here onto the edge of the highlight. Okay, so that's one way to use gouache. Another way to use gouache is to paint transparently. And so in my video, uh, demonstration video, you'll be able to see how I used gouache a little bit more transparently. So that will be on the site pretty soon too. So I hope you've enjoyed this little demo and I hope you'll come back and see some more. So thank you for joining me and I will see you a little bit later. Bye now.